year started at Fox Valley with new office tenants moving into Samuel and Maria House and the stores starting their internal fit outs. Ponte's Italian Kitchen announced the company's first northern restaurant would open here and Sanderson's hit the headlines as the store's unique concept started to take shape. As the centre's opening day neared, Pete McKee's artwork was installed, the fantastic Grandad Fox figure taking pride of place on the roundabout, soon followed by the mural paying tribute to the men and women of steel and the Samuel Fox figure in memory of the man who first started a steelworks here in the 1840s. The company's new 144,000 square feet town centre opened in June, appropriate that umbrellas should be needed on the opening day for the home of the Paragon umbrella frame. Joanna Lumley took the centre and the region to her heart when she declared Fox Valley open. Two, one, yeah! September saw the Phase 2 launch, with Paper Chase joining the lineup and Jojo Mamon Baby opening its first South Yorkshire store at Fox Valley. Our own director, Deborah Holmes's fabulous and long-awaited Sanderson's department store also opened, bringing a range of new brands to the region. Sanderson's was officially opened by Deborah's friends and family and brought a fabulous turnout from shoppers, all keen to see the new concept store. Footfall is growing every month at the centre and the neighbouring housing site from Stonebridge Homes has already secured 25 sales. In October, the new Next store opened. Snap Fitness and Domino's also joined the growing lineup, and we hosted the centre's first Halloween event. A month later, November saw a great turnout from the local community for Fox Valley's first Christmas light switch on, a stunning seven metre high reindeer taking centre stage in the fountain area. The same month, Sports Direct announced they'll be opening in the new year and the new menswear brand Timbuk2 chose the centre for its first store, which opened in December. Plans have just been approved for a Keelum farm shop at Fox Valley, a completely new concept for the area, which is due to open in Easter 2018. Sanderson Arcade has seen its busiest year since the centre opened in 2009. The Cornish Women and Homewares retailer Seasalt opened its most northerly store early in the year. And work got underway on the £7 million redevelopment of the former Morrison store in the town, which neighbours Sanderson Arcade. In February we unveiled a striking new uniform for the Arcade Beadles. The Morpeth Larder's new alfresco dining area opened just in time for summer and the Queen's 90th birthday celebrations was just one of the many events held at the centre. And we also worked in partnership to bring the fourth annual Morpeth Food Festival to the town in October, a growing event which is really putting Morpeth on the map. Also in October, we joined forces with the town team and the Morpeth Chamber of Trade for the first Heart of Morpeth Awards. A fantastic celebration of the great companies in the town and we were particularly proud that our Director of Centre Management, Medi Parry, was given a special Emily Davison Award for her contribution to Morpeth. Pets at Home, Home Bargains and Next all opened through the summer and early autumn and are trading well, completing the new development's lineup on this key town centre site. The crowds joined us for another wonderful turnout at the Christmas light switch on to see the new festive display and the fireworks. Another fantastic event in the arcade's ever busy diary. At Marshall's Yard, the centre has seen some exciting changes as the team prepares to celebrate the centre's 10th birthday during 2017. Root opened this year following the relocation of Stringer's Hair Salon to its new first floor premises. The centre's next store also expanded with a new first floor homewares department and Costa Coffee outlet. 
Brantano went into administration, creating an opportunity to subdivide their unit into two new stores at Marshall's Yard. The footwear retailer Clarks opened their new store at the centre, and the fashion retailer Chic has also expanded with a larger store and a wider range of fantastic brands. Sea Salt opened in the former Chic unit with its first Lincolnshire store. The company trialled a pop-up store throughout the summer months. The second DN21 Awards were held in June, bringing the business community right across the town together and celebrating some of the fantastic and growing ventures here in Gainsborough. And we announced a joint venture with West Lindsay District Council in November. This unique partnership is aimed at regenerating the Market Street and Market Square area, creating a new independent quarter. The plans include a stunning rain wall modelled on Bray Park in New York. The company will also be submitting a new application to deliver a hotel in the town centre in the new year, as part of the investment in this part of Gainsborough, which has been awarded grant funding. Ponte's Italian Kitchen is opening their first Lincolnshire restaurant on the ground floor. The Christmas Light Switch On event attracted record crowds and a great lineup with the return of a stunning firework display and entertainment across the whole town. We've welcomed a number of new tenants to Lime Square this year and continued to expand on a busy diary of events and built up the weekly market under Joel Plumley as centre manager. The cafe and ice cream parlour Marco Rias opened earlier in the year and Specsavers also opened this year in the form of Phones for You unit, bringing a new offer to the centre. Store 21 announced it was closing 80 stores in the summer and that unit at Lime Square will be taken by Peacocks in the new year. We staged the second annual Openshaw Festival in September with partners Manchester City Council and a host of other local groups and organisations. The event drew in the crowd and enjoyed some fantastic weather and great entertainment. Our Christmas Lights event at Lime Square also pulled in the crowds and got the Christmas shopping period off to a strong start. We've purchased the Stocksbridge Medical Centre this year and are working with Well North, headed by Lord Andrew Mawson and Sheffield Teaching Hospitals on remodelling the building. At Market Cross in Selby, we entered into a joint venture to redevelop the former YMCA building adjoining the centre into a retail and residential development. Dominoes are taking one of the available units there and the work will be completed by Easter. We celebrated the opening of the new EE store in August and Couplands will open in the former Greggs unit in the new year. At Royton, the new town centre Lidl store opened in September after work started there in 2015. We worked with Oldham Council on the project and it's created 40 new jobs. We're also working with Lidl on plans for a new store at Oaks Mill in Huddersfield. And our plans for East Ham in East London have evolved and progressed this year into an exciting new development for retail space and 300 apartments. Following our move to Fox Valley, we subdivided our former offices at Penistone One and let that space out to six local companies, and the complex is now full. This year has also seen us form a joint venture company with another South Yorkshire firm, Harworth Estates, to deliver a new local centre for Waverley in South Yorkshire in this growing business and residential area. We're also working here with Well North to deliver the second Pathfinder project in the region. We held a public consultation on the plans in October and will be submitting for planning early in 2017, with a plan to be on site later in the year. We sold our Holderness Gateway development in Hull at the beginning of the year, as part of the company's strategy to invest in new projects. We also appointed two new main board members this year, James Shepherd and Amanda Holmes. And across the team we've seen a few changes throughout 2016. Philippa joined Sanderson Arcade in September, Charlotte Toplas joined the Marshalls Yard team in May and Joel Plumley was appointed Centre Manager at Lime Square in August. Annabelle Plumtree was appointed Centre Manager at Fox Valley. Victoria Walton has also joined the accounts team this year 
And Emily Hughes has kept us all social media savvy since joining Team PR in May. Jess Horton has also joined the admin team under Maggie Collins. Lisa Fox was appointed manager of Sanderson's in May and Emma Stead and Claire Price are also working for Sanderson's at DPLHQ under Deborah. We said goodbye for now to Charlotte Whittaker who went on maternity leave this year to have baby Elizabeth. We look forward to having her back on the team in 2017. We were proud to once again be the main sponsors in the Revo Awards this year. The organisation has rebranded from BCSC as part of its bid to be more relevant to the industry. Both Marshalls Yard and Sanderson Arcade have won awards in the In Bloom competitions for their floral displays and we've continued our support of the Grimethorpe Colliery Brass Band as well as supporting the Stocksbridge History Society. We've also returned to our commitment to grassroots football by sponsoring Stocksbridge Park Steels, where Jamie Vardy started his illustrious footballing career. We'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary during 2017, a great opportunity to reflect on what has been achieved in the last quarter of a century. Our annual Tour of Europe bike ride in September took the 13 riders from Berlin in Germany to the Danish capital of Copenhagen. They covered more than 400 miles and raised an amazing £50,000 for charity. Their efforts have raised money for leukaemia and lymphoma research, now known as Bloodwise, and Action Against Cancer, as well as the Dransfield Foundation. Through the Dransfield Foundation, we've been delighted to support many fantastic causes this year, including Support Dogs, The Exodus Project, the Yorkshire Ambulance Trust, the Red Cross, and CRY, Cardiac Risk in the Young.